Well, good morning. Hopefully I'm seeing a few of you back again uh, for maybe the second or third time today. Thanks for joining me for Holy Communion this morning. This is a blessing that we receive. This is not something that we observe. And so if you don't have the elements, you can grab them. Um, the wafer or bread or juice. You need something that symbolizes the body of Jesus, which we normally take or use crackers for, and the blood of Jesus, which we typically use juice for. And we're doing those in this to remember the body the blood, the sacrifice of Jesus. And so if you need to grab those elements, you can. And as you do, I'm going to remind you that nowhere on the face of the earth can you find the power that lie within these two elements. The bread being the body of Jesus and the blood being the blood that was shed so you could be righteous in God's sight, so you'd be, you could be forgiven, redeemed. It's a cup of redemption. And so there's not a pill that you can take or a shot that you can get or a surgery you can have that is more powerful than what lies in these two elements. So. I ask you to take this seriously this morning. Why we take communion, you find it in Acts 2, 46 and 47, but I'm going to go back and I'm going to read Acts 2, 40 through 47 today. It says, And Peter solemnly testified and continued to admonish and urge the people with, with many more words, saying, Be saved from this crooked and unjust generation. So then those who accepted his message were baptized, and they continually and faithfully devoted themselves to the instruction of the apostles and the fellowship and eating meals together, breaking bread, and to prayer. And all who had believed in Jesus as Savior were together and had all things in common, considering their possessions to belong to the group as a whole. And they, and they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing their proceeds with all the other believers as anyone had need. So then no one had need in the group because everybody came together and shared everything they had. They were like family. In verse 46, it says, Day after day they met in the temple area, continuing with one mind, one mind, they were all in agreement, and breaking bread in various private homes. It's what we're doing today. They were eating their meals together with joy and generous hearts, praising God continually and having favor with all people. So then you see today that we're taking this because we're devoted to this. We're devoted to remembering. This is not a ritual to observe, rather a blessing that we receive. And so then before we receive, we take time, as Paul has requested that we do every time, that we remember Jesus to examine ourselves. And in 1 Corinthians um, 11, 27, you see that, so whoever eats the bread or bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in a way that is unworthy of him will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. But a person must prayerfully examine himself and his relationship to Christ. And only when he has done so should eat of the bread and drink of the cup. And so this is why we take time to reflect this morning, to examine ourselves, to check our hearts, because verse 31 says, when we evaluate and judge ourselves honestly, recognizing our shortcomings and correcting our behavior, we will not be judged. It's what the Holy Spirit convicts us of. And so this morning, I'm going to challenge you to get honest with yourself, to be honest with God. Come with your whole heart, with open hands. And whether that might be something you said this morning or an act uh, earlier this week, man, get honest, examine your heart. Psalms 139 says, search me, God, know my heart. Search me, guys. This is, this is an every morning thing for me. Search me, God, know my heart. Test me and know my concerns. Let God in today because He wants to do something in your life that only He can do. And so as we do this, this morning we're going to take just a few minutes to reflect on the goodness of God, but to examine our hearts when we come into remembrance of God, of Jesus, the Son of God, that we can actually do this with some sincerity in our hearts because of um, our gratitude for what He's done for us. So. Let's pray and we'll reflect. Father, thank you for this holy moment. Lord, I ask that you would help people to open their hearts this morning, open their minds and their eyes to see, Lord, the things that they need to see. Lord, as we sit here in this moment to examine our hearts, to check ourselves, to repent, uh, to ask forgiveness, to, uh, to be. Lord, I thank you for bringing every person to this place and I just ask you to move to move in and through every house that's engaged right now. And I thank you, Lord, for bringing about change in hearts today because we're taking time to remember you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen.
is all you are. Will you meet me here again? In Psalms 103, verse 8 through 18, it says this, this is David, The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in compassion and loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins as we deserve, nor rewarded us with punishment according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who who fear, reverence, and worship Him with all filled respect and deepest reverence. As far as the East is from the West, so far has He removed our transgressions from us. Just as the Father loves His children, so the Lord loves those who reverence and worship Him with all filled respect and deep, deepest reverence. For He knows our moral, mortal frame. He remembers that we are merely dust. As for man, his days are like grass, like a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it is no more. And its place knows it no longer. But, it's a great but here, but the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who reverence Him and His righteousness to, to children's children, to those who honor and keep His covenant and remember to do His commandments in printing, in printing, his word on their hearts. We do this with solemn reverence this morning and with heartfelt gratitude for the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. We do it to remember and to recognize the body of Jesus. And so this morning, if you have your bread or your wafer, whatever you have that represents the body of Jesus, I'm gonna ask you to grab it. And if you need healing this morning for your body, I can't know that all. I can't pretend to know it, but God does know. And He knows it right as you stand or sit or lay wherever you are. And so if you need healing this morning, I'm just going to ask you to ask God to heal you. Be very specific in it. It says it takes the faith, the Bible says it takes the faith of a mustard seed for this to take place. If you're gathering and you call yourself a son or a daughter of Christ and you've prayed to receive Jesus, you have the Spirit, you have God's Spirit, His Holy Spirit in you, and you have the faith, then healing is going to find you this morning as you ask. So let's take the bread together this morning. As we lift the cup, take the cup and whatever's in there that symbolizes the blood of Jesus that was shed to redeem you, to restore your relationship with God so that you could be in relationship with your Heavenly Father one more time. This is why Jesus came. Because of this cup, because of the juice, the blood that was shed covers your sin. It covers what separated you. So now you're connected. So then you are made right in God's sight. And this is how God sees you. And so if you need forgiveness this morning of sin, something seen, something said, something done, ask God to forgive you with the same faith that it takes to receive healing it's the same faith it takes to receive forgiveness today so we can be right. Let's take the cup together. Lord, thank you for this moment. Thank you for the faith that people have stood on this morning. The truth. It's what's in the Bible. It's what you call us to do. And as we remember the broken body of Jesus, I thank you for healing people that could hear my voice right now who stood this morning on the word with their faith with a belief in the Son of God in Jesus Christ the perfect sacrifice for our healing and Lord for those who need forgiveness for those who are forgiven this morning thank you thank you for giving them a boldness to ask where they are Thank you, Lord, for the blood that covers every sin and every transgression in the entire world. 
regardless of where people are watching from. Lord, I thank you for covering those sins, for giving people their confidence back, for giving them their boldness back, for helping them to walk in a way that would honor you and would glorify you because of the faith they have in you and the forgiveness they've received. I love you for these moments. I'm so glad that we get to do them. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to be a part. Thank you for your son, Jesus, the ultimate sacrifice, Lord, so that we could be free from pain, free from hurt, so that we could be healed. We could be whole. We could be righteous so that we can be in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for that book, for our names, for the place you have us in. We're eternally grateful, and we thank you so much for this day and for your son. It's in his name we pray. Amen. The sun, moon, and stars Shout your name They give you rest And I will do the same With all my heart I give you glory The sun, the sun Praise God.